This is Twit. We told you July 16th about a TechCrunch exclusive that reported Samsung in talks at that time to buy the home automation startup SmartThings for $200 million. Well, the deal is now done. We don't know the actual price. $200 million is what TechCrunch reported back when they were reporting the rumor. And just a full disclosure before we get into the conversation, SmartThings is a sponsor of some shows on the Twit Network. David Kendar is the Senior Vice President for Editorial at Reviewed.com and joins us now. Welcome, David Kendar. Hi, how's it going? Great, and thank you for bringing your own bricks. We here at the Brick House love bricks, and we just can't get enough of them. Uh, let me ask you a quick question about Smart Things. Can you tell us more about Smart Things and the products they make? I mean, what what is this company all about? Sure. So Smart Things is a startup that was working to solve the problem of home automation. Um, the problem with home automation is that you have multiple devices and multiple protocols, and most of them can't talk to each other because you have all of these companies developing them with vested interests in making sure that only their platforms succeed. What SmartThings has done is uh, create hardware and software that can mesh all of these disparate elements together uh, so that they can actually talk to each other. So David, I mean, what exactly is, is Samsung buying? Are they buying, you know, the products? Are they buying the brand? Are they wanting to get, you know, the, the employees? What exactly are they buying? Is it the developer ecosystem that's already around? What, what are they, what's the point of Samsung making this purchase, do you think? Um, what's behind it? Well, um, SmartThings has the largest developer community of any of the ecosystems. It's got a great Cinderella story in a, two, a little over two years ago. It was a Kickstarter campaign and now it just got bought for $200 million. They've done a really excellent job of developing relationships, partnerships, and trust in that developer community by uh, maintaining an open standard. So it works with Zigbee, it works with Z-Wave, it works with Wi-Fi. And I think they were able to put themselves out there in a way that maybe a tech giant like Samsung couldn't do, because if it failed, it was just a startup that was going to take the failure. So why not let someone else out there and then just snatch them up for money, which Samsung, of course, has plenty of. Now, of course, everybody's getting into the home automation racket. Uh, you have uh, HomeKit uh, coming from Apple. You have, of course, Google purchasing the Nest company. Is this a competitive play against uh, Apple and Google, or is this something completely different? Well, I just got off the phone with Alex Hawkinson, who's the CEO and founder of SmartThings. And I posed that question to him. And the way he sees it is that anyone that's creating an open standard is going to be able to work with all of those other companies. And I think that's his vision. Now, the reality of the marketplace is that, of course, these companies are at war with each other for your home. There's, there's nothing but potential to grow, to take all of those dumb things in your home and make them smart. And I, I think you're going to see maybe a little friction between smart things vision of what the smart home should be and what Samsung's vision is going to be. Now, that's that's my assertion and, and that's my prediction, but um, SmartThings is remaining an independent, independently operated company within Samsung, and it sounds like they're going to work really hard to maintain that open standard. And that's the only way that smart home is going to get up off the ground is if all of these companies can settle on one, maybe two common frameworks for all these things to talk to each other. They will uh, remain independent, as you said, uh, but they will move from Washington, D.C. to Palo Alto uh, here correct. in Silicon Valley. Uh, and they have 55 employees. Now, um, you know, th this is um, th this company is, um, you know, like you say, it's an open platform. Uh, do you see th at some point l looking at the larger industry, these open platforms interoperating to the point where the Internet of Things or the home automation movement, uh, the home automation corner of the Internet of Things is something where there's wide interoperability that's similar to the Internet or similar to the PC where you have multi, you know, massively agreed upon standards like USB and so on. Are we headed toward that world or are we headed toward a nightmare world where everybody's got their own platform, nothing works together and users have to sort it all out? Well, that is the big challenge in smart home right now is that you have so many different standards. You have Zigbee, Z-Wave, Wi-Fi, Thread, Bluetooth. And the reason that we have uh, an, 
an internet of all, not the internet of things, but the original internet, is because people were able to agree upon certain standards. Um, maybe they didn't agree upon them pleasantly. Maybe it, it took some muscle from some large companies to back a single standard and force everyone into those standards. And that's maybe what needs to happen again. But it's the Wild West right now in terms of smart home. You have a lot of great products out there, but do you risk buying a Nest and owning a Samsung phone if in 12 months they're both going to be great systems, but they can't talk to each other? I, I think that's that's the biggest fear for consumers, and that fear is not going to be allayed until we have an agreed-upon standard. All right, before I let you go, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about Reviewed.com? Are you part of USA Today? What, what's the relationship between you guys and USA Today? Yeah, so Reviewed.com uh, began as a startup about 15 years ago. It was camcorderinfo.com, and I, I think you know Robin Less, our founder. Mm -hmm. um, we were acquired by Gannett, which is the parent company of USA Today, about three and a half years ago. So we remained an independent editorial organization, but we worked very closely with USA Today and the rest of the Gannett network. All right, well, thank you so much. And, uh, and of course... Um we're going to be watching uh, review.com and, and uh, also watching this story and see what Samsung actually does with smart things. They always say they're going to keep it independent. But to me, that always just seems like a free thing you can say during negotiations to get them under your wing. And once you own the thing, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> so David Kendar writes at review.com. And you can follow him on Twitter at Dave Ken Kender. Kender, That's yeah. K-E-N-D-E-R, <laughs> not Kendar, Kender. Uh, my, my apologies for that. But thank you so much for coming on Tech News Today. Thanks a lot.